Hello and welcome to another episode of Zero to Bevy. In today's video, I'll be telling you about one of the core concepts of game development with Bevy, the entity. If you're new to Bevy or game development in general, don't worry, by the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of what an entity is and how they are used in your game. So let's get started. First, we need to talk about the entity component system or for short ECS. Bevy uses this model to manage all aspects of your game. It's a bit different to traditional object oriented programming uh, where you might have classes like player and enemy that contain both data and behavior of those appropriate things. Instead, inside an ECS, you have entities, components, and systems which control everything. Components representing the actual data that is held. Systems are the logic that runs on top of components, modifying and mutating the world accordingly and entities, which are used to group multiple components together. In this video, we're only going to be covering entities, but systems and components will get their own video. So what is an entity? Think of them sort of like as IDs that link otherwise separate data together. Because it is only an ID, it doesn't actually have any data or behavior of its own. Instead, telling systems what components they should act on. So how does Bevy do entities? Well, quite simply on the surface, but under the hood, there is a lot going on in order to make Bevy much faster. Bevy's entities are simply two 32-bit numbers. The first is the ID. This is the actual value of the entity and is used to look up the component. The second number is the generation. This allows for Bevy to reuse IDs in order to allow for a really high packing of data. This increases locality in things like arrays, allowing for a more efficient execution of the code. This is where Bevy gets a lot of its amazing speed from. You'll also notice in this struct of how Bevy implements entities, it's actually taking into account whether you're using a little endian or big endian architecture in order to make an entity have the same data structure as a U64. This allows for more efficient execution of code. Most of the time, you don't have to worry about the generation since Bevy will handle this for you when you add or remove entities from your game. But it's important to note that Bevy can sometimes panic when you use an entity that has the wrong generation. Though I believe in release builds, it may just throw an error. It can be helpful to think of entities as containers that contain all the components that are related to each other. This can be a good mental image for when you and how to use them. Though it is important to note that this is actually the opposite of what Bevy is actually doing to store the data. Depending on the component's declared storage type, they're actually stored inside a VEC or a hash map and the entity is used to access the corresponding data, either by using the ID as an index or as a lookup, respectively. I'll cover this in more detail when we talk about components in their own video. If you're still unsure how entities fit into game design, you can compare this to game objects in Unity. Each game object represents something in the world, and you attach specific mono behaviors to the object to get it to do specific things. Mono behaviors, because of their object-oriented nature, combine both components and systems into one concrete idea. This can be convenient to learn, but is slower to execute and more difficult to maintain. So now that we know what an entity is, we still need to get one. As I mentioned earlier, Bevy is managing generations, so you can't just simply create an entity out of nowhere and call it a day, or its generation number could be wrong and this would cause issues in your world. So instead we need to request one from the world. This can be done by calling ID after spawning in a bundle. Once we have an entity, it can easily be copied and stored wherever we need it to be able to access the components it is associated with later on in our game. We can use our entity with the commands to add or remove components later, or we can use it with a query in order to access the specific underlying data inside the component. But this will be covered in their own video as they are their own entire topic. So don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss those. So this was a quick overview of entities and where to use them in Bevy. I needed to start with this video as it is very important for a lot of the other parts of Bevy that you know what an entity is because a lot of people I have noticed confuse them with objects and uh, try to spawn in multiple entities as if they were a single uniform object as you would attach different mono behaviors to the object in Unity. This can result in people not having certain behaviors working properly because they've tried to spawn in the components for part of the behavior on a separate entity than the entity that contains the rest of the components. This breaks how systems work, which again, I will cover in more detail in a future video. So don't forget to subscribe and like this video so that it can be boosted in the algorithm and more people can join our journey learning Bevy. I'd like to thank my Kofi supporters, 
dash y dash at the moment. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can find a link to my Kofi in the description, or you can become a YouTube member if you'd like to get some cool emotes for when I'm live streaming. Again, thank you for tuning in to the end of the video, and I will see you in the next one.